Hello! Welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video for the Triangle Inequality. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to apply the absolute value function in various contexts, so algebraically and geometrically. You should be able to relate or distinguish problem solving and rough work to a proof. And you should be able to break up a sum using the triangle inequality um, in what's called a bounding argument. So the triangle inequality is basically the statement, the sum of any two sides of a triangle is always greater or equal to the third side. And the motivation for us is that the triangle inequality is one of the two important inequalities we will see in this course. And today we're gonna to understand it both geometrically and algebraically. We'll start off with the definition of absolute value since we're going to use it quite a bit. If X is a real number, I missed an A there, then the absolute value of x is either just x itself if x is positive or it's negative x if x is negative. So the absolute value has the property that it's always going to turn the number positive. One special case of the absolute value, which we'll look at today, is when you take the absolute value of a minus b. This can be interpreted as the distance between a and b. So it doesn't matter if a, or a is to the left or b is to the left, it'll always give you the distance between them. So part of what this means is whenever you see an absolute value of something minus something, you should think that there's a distance involved. Let's look at some visualizations of the absolute value function. So this picture is the function y equals x and y equals absolute value x. What we can see from the picture is that no matter what real number you take, x is always going to be less than or equal to absolute value of x. So this is an equality that you've known um, and have probably used before, but this is the picture of why it's happening. The next example will try to justify why we look at pictures. So imagine you have the question, what is the maximum value of the absolute value of x squared minus 1 when the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1? Now, on its surface, this looks like a complicated inequality problem. There's lots of absolute values. You might have to, if you try to solve it purely algebraically, it's going to be quite um, annoying. It's not that bad, but um, we'll see that if we understand the picture, it'll be much faster. So we know what x squared minus one looks like. It's a parabola that opens upwards and it's shifted down one unit. That's the minus one. And then the absolute value will take all of the negative stuff, like right here, and flip it to the positives, and it'll keep all of the positives positive. So this is how we get the picture of absolute value of x squared minus 1. Now what's the max value of this when the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1? Well, here we can interpret this as x belonging between minus 1 and 1, and then it's pretty clear to us that the max occurs at x equals 0. So by understanding the picture, we can get a, a pretty fast answer. Now let's look at some basic facts about absolute value. So for any real numbers x and y, x squared is always equal to the square of the absolute value of x. The square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x, not necessarily equal to x itself. x is always less than or equal to the absolute value and the absolute value plays nicely with uh, multiplication. Let's look at a special case of 4. If you take y equals minus 1, then you get that the absolute value of minus x is equal to x times, sorry, the absolute value of x times the absolute value of minus 1, and this just becomes 1, so it's the absolute value of x. So a number and its negative always have the same absolute value. And a special case of this is when you take the distance. So if you take the absolute value of b minus a, you factor out a minus one, and that's going to give you the same absolute value as a minus b. So what does this say in terms of distance? It says that the distance from a to b is the same as the distance from b to a. And there's a short proof of it. 
All four of these facts can be proved from uh, simpler things. Now we're about ready to talk about the triangle inequality. And first, let's take a look at um, how triangles are involved. So remember that we can interpret the absolute value of something minus something as a distance. So in this case, if you're trying to get from x to y, well, this distance is shorter than first the distance to z and then the distance up to y. That makes sense intuitively for us uh, for a picture. So going directly to a point is shorter than taking a detour to a third point. Algebraically, where does this show up? Well, we can write the absolute value of x minus y as x minus z plus z minus y. So these two will cancel and become zero. And our goal is to break this up using absolute values. They're not equal, it's less than or equal to. So we're gonna see that. This inequality is called the triangle inequality. So the, the general way to say the triangle inequality is that for all real numbers a and b, the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. And hidden underneath is a triangle which is saying if you go from x to y, um, that's shorter than if you take a detour. Okay, so just like the proof of the AMGM, we're going to use rough work first, and then we'll write out our proof nicely. So here's our rough work or our ugly garbage. Now the first step of this is not obvious, but it's quite useful. It's to square both sides. And because everything's an absolute value, everything's uh, non-negative, so squaring maintains the inequality. Now once we have the square, we can expand it. So we expand the right-hand side using FOIL. Now we can simplify the absolute value of x squared and the middle part. So here we expanded using FOIL on the left-hand side. Here we combined uh, the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y. Now these terms are going to be equal, the x squared terms are going to be equal, and the y squareds are going to be equal. So we cancel those. So finally, we're left with 2xy is less than 2 absolute value uh, xy. Cancel the twos, and we end up with some quantity is less than or equal to the same quantities, uh, but its absolute value. Now this is going to be the basic fact that we're going to start from, and from here, uh, we're, going to, we're going to start using this, which is a basic fact, and then we'll prove the triangle inequality, which is what we want. And we'll use a lot of these ideas. So this is our rough work. We'll have this off to the side. Now let's reorder it um, and justify everything so that it can be read start to finish. So I've written everything out for you. I'm going to read it, but I won't dwell too carefully on every step because we did that in our rough work. So we start by letting x and y be real numbers. And we're going to start with this basic fact, which is fact three, that x times y is less than the absolute value of x times y. Now we multiply uh, two by both sides and we expand this, we break up the absolute value. Fact one and fact, sorry, fact one tells us that x squared is equal to the absolute value of x squared. Add everything together to maintain an inequality. Factoring the right hand side gives us the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y squared. Fact two of inequalities tells us that we can take the square root of both sides and it maintains the inequality, so long as everything's positive, which it is. So then we end up with this by taking the square root. This thing on the right has too many absolute values, um, but since the inner part is already non-negative, then it will stay non-negative. Well, then, then taking the absolute value doesn't do anything what I mean. And then finally we get what we want. So once we drop this second layer of absolute values, we're okay. One thing to note about this proof is that uh, if you hadn't done your rough work, it wouldn't be clear to start with the second line. The second line is sort of mysterious and coming out of nowhere, but it turns out to be exactly the right thing for us. 
One other thing that we should check is when we do a proof using inequalities, is the are the first lines of our proof assuming something that we want to prove? Well, no, we're, we're, we're only using things that were justified. So that's a good sign. Finally, let's see um, an example of a, what's called a bounding argument. So find a number m such that this quantity is less than or equal to m for all x, absolute value of x less than or equal to 2. We're going to use the triangle inequality to prove this. So to set up the triangle inequality, we have to have the absolute value of a sum. So I, I break up the x to the 5 on one side and the, the linear term on the other side. By using the triangle inequality, I get that I can break up the absolute value. Now I can factor out a minus 1, and that doesn't change the absolute value. Here I can use the triangle inequality again on the linear term. I can factor out a 2. Oh, that should be an x to the 5. Sorry, that's a typo. And then finally, I can figure out when is x its largest? When is the absolute value of x its largest? Well, x is less than or equal to 2. Absolute value of x is less than or equal to 2. So this part will be less than 2 to the 5. This will be less than 4. This will be less than 5. So it's 41 in total. Again, this is a typo. That should be a 5. So that tells us that we can take m to be 41. And this quantity over here will always be less than or equal to 41. There are possibly other m's that will work. We were just looking for one. Finally, let's take a moment to reflect. What's the value in understanding the absolute value function geometrically as well as algebraically? How is the triangle inequality related to triangles? Finally, how does Desmo, why does Desmos tell us that this quantity is less than 33 on the, that interval, but we got an answer of 41? What's going on? Why did our proof tell us that? Thank you very much and have a good day.